بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على شرف الأنبياء والمرسلين محمد رسول الله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وسلم وسلم تسليما كثيرا كثيرا خما بعد ما بردن سجدس I'm sure many of us or all of us have heard and people have told us that we should have goals in life and that's self-evident because the reason you should have a goal is so that your effort is directed towards that goal without a goal the effort has no meaning and time is wasted because you are doing random stuff but once you have a goal then your effort is directed towards that goal so if i want to become a airline pilot for example if i want to learn to fly a plane uh, i won't go and enroll in a driving school car driving school different goal i want to fly a plane i, I mean i know how to drive a car so and so on and so on so you can take your own example so, so point being that the goal directs the effort what kind of effort depends on what kind of goal now see what allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said wal asri inna lil insana lafi khusr wal asri inna lil insana lafi khusr allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took an oath by time and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in another place allah said i am time so this is a very very serious and heavy oath and then allah said inna lil insana so the inna which is a uh, an article of emphasis in the linsana and then there's another one the other lamb of emphasis la fi khus verily all of mankind is in loss all of mankind is lost so the question to ask ourselves is when allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying all of mankind is lost it means that all the stuff that human beings do and are doing can result only in one thing which is loss because this is allah said this allah said inna lil insana lafi khusr so my goals in life what are they are they they look like what who's goals if i say name for me three of your role models who do you name and these are questions these are not questions they're not trick questions they're not questions for you to just quickly think of some you know three respectable names no the issue is what is really in your heart what do you want to do who do you want to be like that is the issue the issue is not giving an answer right i can say my three uh, role models abu bakr as siddiq before that muhammad rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam Abu Bakr al-Siddiq, Umar ibn al-Khattab, Radhi al-Anu. Sure, so say it. What does it matter? Is it, really, is it true in your heart? No. In my heart is Jeff Bezos, uh, Elon Musk. The real you see. We need to get real. I mean, this is uh, just saying something. Is, that's not the issue is what is really in my heart. The fact is that for all, most of us if not all of us whether you say abu bakar siddiq or jeff bezos you will not you will not become like either of them right? how how, tell me how how likely is it that, that you're going to get the kind of wealth that bezos has not very likely right? i mean this doesn't matter how much you spend it's not going to happen the key is not that the key is it sets you on a particular path So that path, whether I travel ten miles on it or I travel a thousand miles on it, it is leading me to a particular goal, and that's the point. That's the issue. If I want to make my life like the life of Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq, Rabbi Allah Anu, then that's a path. It's all path. These are all human beings. All of us are human beings. He was a human being. He was not a, a malak or an angel or something. You know, he was he was human being. but he decided to live his life according to a particular way and that path took him to some place so what is that path and that path will depend on what is my goal 
and the goal depends on how I measure myself vis-a-vis -vis that goal. Right? All of us, without exception, we have goals which make us feel proud, feel good about ourselves, feel confident. We say, okay, I've achieved something. Even in the within quotes, good goals. Not everybody, for example, wants to write a book. Right? I, I mean, you might say, well, I'm not interested in writing a book. So is there anything wrong? No, nothing is wrong in writing a book. It's a great thing, but it's not my, th it's not my thing. So, what do you want to do? I want to play basketball and I want to, you know, have this kind of a score in basketball. I mean, both are, there's nothing wrong with either of them, but what gives me a sense of achievement? Therefore, the question to ask ourselves is, what gives me a sense of achievement as a human being? Before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What is that? I just went to the funeral of one person and uh, they were having a wake for him and they actually had to have a police car outside to direct traffic. That many cars coming there to the funeral home for the wake of this individual. So obviously, he's a very popular person. Lots and lots of people in the world loved him. People had a lot of good things to say about him. Big obituary in the newspaper and so on and so on. Now the question to ask is, and I'm not sitting in judgment to say what will happen before Allah, because only Allah knows that, I don't know this. But I'm saying that if you are there, or conversely, if you are a person who, who died, nobody knows. So some of the brothers get together, maybe three, four people, and they, you know, they do your ghusl, janada, you, they bury you. Before Allah, who is best? Who is better? Not to say that if more people come, it's not. It's a good thing, alhamdulillah. If, if more people come for the right reason, it's a very good thing. But what is that reason? Are, are people coming for that reason? That is the key thing to ask. So my life, I spend my, I spend my whole life doing something. And at the end of the life, when I am standing before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what is that life worth? And what that life is worth depends on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's standard, not on my standard. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said about our lives, وَلَا سِرِنَّ الْإِنسَانَ لَفِيُقُسَ So, the way we come to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I want to close with a story. There was a man in the time of Musa alayhi salam who was a very, very bad man, very evil. And he was so much of a trouble, he was such a nuisance to everybody that they eventually the town people, they threw him out of the place. They said, Get out, they banished him. So he is wandering in the wilderness by himself. And the people said, said good, we got rid of him. And then one day, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to Musa alayhi salam, that man who you banished from the town, he died. And he is in such and such a place, his body. So Allah says to Musa alayhi salam, go and do his janazah. Go and wash him, shroud him, and bury him. And announce in the town that whoever goes with you, Allah will forgive him. 
So Musa is very perplexed. He said, what is this? This man was evil and so on. Allah is sending me to do his janat. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not only sending me, but Allah is saying to the whole town, whoever goes, Allah will forgive him. So obviously when Musa a.s. announced this, the whole town came. And they went there, found the body, they washed it, buried it. When they returned, of course, Musa a.s. Musa a.s. Musa a.s. when they returned, Musa a.s. said, Ya Rab, please tell me, what is the story? Why did you do that? This, you, you know this man was so bad. We threw him out of the place. Why did you send me and why did you announce this forgiveness for everybody? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Ya Musa, when the man was dying, he was lying on the ground. He said, he looked up at the heavens, he raised his hands and he said, Ya Rab, if I knew, if I knew that by punishing me, by, by giving me adab, it would make you happy, I would not seek forgiveness. If I knew that by giving me Adha, by punishing me, it would make you happy, I would not seek forgiveness. And then he says, Ya Rab, if I knew that by punishing me, it would increase your Jalal and Jamal, your greatness and glory, I would not, even by an iota, even by you know one atom, I would not seek forgiveness. But he says, Ya Rab, I know that by punishing me, it will not increase your glory and majesty in any way. And by punishing me, it will not give you any happiness. So please forgive me. So Allah says, I forgive you. I sent you to do the janazah. Now my question to myself and you is, don't stop at this story. Think about who gives that man that tawfiq. Who gives him those words? Who taught Adam Ali Salam Rabbana Zalam Nan Fusana Wailam Takwilana Wutar Hamna Lana Kunam al Khazri? This is our Jalajara. Whose Rahma, whose forgiveness extends to the ex to this to this extent that he is teaching the man those words. which will make him among the people who are forgiven. And that's why I remind myself and you, the real goal in life is not to get this and that and that, but to please Allah, the rida of Allah. I won't say the goal is not even to get Jannah because to ask for Jannah is Sunnah and Allah asked us to ask for Jannah. So we don't say, don't ask. But the point is that the real goal is to seek to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the rida of Allah. Because if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pleased with us, then nothing else matters. As somebody said, if you get the whole world and you lose Allah, what have you gained? And if you lose the whole world and you gain Allah, what have you lost? It is the pleasure of Allah, the desire of Allah. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala jala 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 to enable us to live lives and to speak, make, to speak and to act in ways which result in His pleasure. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us to please Him and to be pleased with us and to save us from doing anything which displeases Him. Wa sallallahu ala nabi kareem wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sahbihi wa rahmatikya 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 rahmatik